Hi, I'm David Andean, Director of Reference Designs here at Maxim Integrated. Today, we're going to talk about solar module optimization and how with Maxim's technology, you can improve your solar module performance by up to 20%. Joining me today is Daniel Roberts, a Senior Specialist in our Solar Business Unit. Daniel, thanks for being here. Great to be here, Dave. So Daniel, when we talk about solar module performance, what are some of the ways in which solar module performance can degrade? Uh, you've got a few factors. Uh, all of them involve removing light from the cells in a solar module. So you might have dust, uh, you might have object shading, you might have uh, inter-row shading, uh, there's, or just aging of the module itself. Now let's talk a little bit about inter-row shading where a shadow from one row casts a shadow onto the next row. An uh, inter-row shading will produce a thin stripe of shade on the modules behind each row. Um, so what this does is forces the array to shift to a new operating point and it subtracts not only the energy of the shaded area but some energy from the cells that are still in sunlight. So what are some of the ways to address this issue? The uh, traditional method is to use an add-on uh, module level optimizer like this one and it adjusts the output of each individual module to find an, a new maximum power point and mitigate some of the effects of that shape. But doesn't the overall performance of the system still degrade significantly? Absolutely. Each module has three separate substrings of, of cells within it and so you can go one step deeper uh, with your PowerPoint tracking. Okay, so tell me about what the Maxim team did to address this issue and further improve performance. Sure. We moved from your traditional add-on optimizer like this to uh, the substring level. So we took the functionality of a PowerPoint tracking device and put it in each individual integrated circuit and then we attach those cell strings to each IC and we do sub-module PowerPoint tracking. Very cool. And in terms of overall performance, what sort of improvements can a customer expect to see? So there's a couple improvements. The immediate improvement is just PowerPoint tracking for each sub-string. But what that allows you to do with your array design is, is increase energy density. So you actually move your rows and modules intentionally closer to one another and uh, mitigate the shade when it happens. So let's take a closer look at exactly how this works. Sure. We've got an example of an array that it experiences some inter-row shading during the, the darker portions of the year. Uh, this is a traditional array uh, without the optimization technology and that small stripe of shading on the bottom of each row does dramatically affect the output of the array. So but with a maximum optimized array the whole substring doesn't need to come offline right? Correct. So we're doing that sub-module PowerPoint tracking and we are tolerating the shade on that bottom row we're allowing the rest of the array to continue its energy production and we're, we're keeping it from forcing the inverter to shift its power point to a lower and level. That's, that's right. And with a non-maximum optimized array, you're going to see a significant drop in output. So, Daniel, what would be the overall return on investment for a maximum optimized array like this? So there's two parts. We're going to tolerate that shade so we can design a tighter system. Right? We can increase your production per acre of solar installation. So not only are we going to tolerate the same shade as an OEM array, we can actually take it one step further and design in some more shade and increase our total ROI by about 20%. Fantastic. So Daniel, we've talked about how cell string optimization can address the issues posed by row to row shading. But what about other sources of shade that degrade solar module performance? Sure, you've got object shading. Uh, it has much the same effect as inner row shading, but it usually only affects one or two modules in the array. And today we see that our shade is being provided by a Frisbee. Right. 
And traditionally that would kill the output of not only that module, but again, it would shift the operating point of the system and even the unshaded modules would be affected by that. And how does the Maxim module respond? Again, we've broken up the PowerPoint tracking functionality of the system into very small chunks. So the, mod the cells that are shaded will be affected, so the power output will go down, but it won't affect the entire system. What about the overall lifetime of solar cell modules? Part of the electrical effects of shade is creating hot spots in the module, uh, requiring diode activation. So that reduces your overall usable life of a module through heat. And with this heat, you're talking about having to actually tear out and replace modules prematurely. I mean, that's got to cost a lot of money based on equipment and labor, and you're not producing electricity while that's going on. What does the Maxim technology do to address this? Sure, we prevent those hot spots from, from, from forming in the module. So it's going to increase that usable life and prevent a lot of the degradation that occurs. Okay, so with Maxim, no diodes, no hot spots. Absolutely, and no premature truck roll, no rip and replace. Excellent. And I think it bears mentioning, one of the most special things about Maxim optimized solar modules is that they require no special tools for installation. Right, there's no additional communication hardware, no extra wiring within the array itself. Uh, it's a fully embedded, fully integrated solution. Very nice. Well, Daniel, thanks so much for joining us today, and thank you for taking the time to watch this video. For more information about Maxim Solar, Solar Optimizers, please visit our website at www.maximintegrated.com solar. Thanks, and we'll see you next time.